are affecting everyone's pockets. Many people are saying we need to lower gas prices, but I'm rather timorous that this is only a band-aid. It doesn't fix the real problem, our dependency on crude oil. I think we need to refocus our efforts and start looking for technologies to lower our dependence on oil. According to the Union of Concerned Scientists, adopting fuel-efficient vehicle technologies to meet standards of just 40 miles per gallon by 2015 and 55 miles per gallon by 2025 would save us three times more gas than we could ever find by drilling in the Arctic refuge. So what kinds of fuel-efficient technologies are out there? Today I'd like to look at four different alternatives to the standard gas-powered car and their outlook and for the future and for the environment. These are ethanol, hybrid vehicles, electric vehicles, and hydrogen fuel cells. First, let's look at ethanols. Uh, ethanols are fuels produced from plants. For example, corn ethanol is widely available. On the one hand, it's highly renewable. Corn grows very quickly. And the production of corn ethanol generates 20% fewer emissions than the production of gasoline. However, corn ethanol contains one third less energy than gasoline, meaning our mileage from it is 30 to 40% lower. And in the end, it doesn't save us any money. The massive production of corn ethanol could even lead to the destruction of habitats and more pollution and increased global warming. A second option is hybrid vehicles. Now, hybrid vehicles are run by a battery that's assisted by a, a gas motor. The battery is recharged either by the engine or by hoisting when braking from the rotation of the wheels. Uh, the fuel efficiency of a hybrid vehicle is 25 to 30 percent higher than that of a gas vehicle, and burning less fuel means lower greenhouse gas emissions. Hybrids are especially good for short distances and for stop and go traffic. But the major issue with hybrids is the cost. The batteries are very expensive, and it can take several years for the cost of the car to even out with the same losing gas and they still use gas, which doesn't solve the problem of our dependence on crude oil. Two alternatives that would be completely emission-free are electric vehicles and cars powered by hydrogen fuel cells. Electric vehicles run exclusively on a battery. Uh, they're very inexpensive to fuel because power costs about one quarter the cost of gasoline. Like hybrids, they're good for commuters, for driving short distances and in stop and go traffic. Unfortunately, our battery technology isn't all the way there yet. The batteries can require long recharge times, such as overnight. And they're very expensive. And also, they have a limited range. Uh, especially compared to gas, before they need to be recharged. A second emission-free option would be hydrogen. In a hydrogen car, hydrogen works similarly to a hybrid car, where an electric motor is assisted by a hydrogen-powered engine. The only emission from the, that engine is water. They have a much higher mileage than uh, hybrids, for example, a Honda prototype is rated at 70 miles per gallon, where most hybrids are around 35 to 40. The major disadvantages of the hydrogen fuel cell are the infrastructure. It would cost billions of dollars to build the infrastructure needed to deliver and produce hydrogen fuel. Also, since um, hydrogen is it's possible to produce hydrogen from water, but it's much easier and less expensive to produce it from natural gas, another non-renewable resource like crude oil. Uh, the technology for hydrogen fuel cells is still about 10 to 20 years away, or so they say, because of major technological hurdles in the safe production, distribution, and storage 
of hydrogen. I mean, who wants to be driving a car with an H bomb? <laughs> <laughs> so really, what is the best option for our future? It seems to me that some combination of an electric car and a fuel engine seems to be the best. And hybrids, in fact, are becoming much more available and desirable than consumers. People are looking for ways to spend less gas, and this seems to be the best answer right now. Perhaps our, this increased interest will bring down the price of the cars and help to provide incentives for manufacturers to increase their research and into the battery technology. In fact, more advanced and efficient hybrids are already becoming available. For example, Chevy announced that it expects to produce start production in 2010 of the Chevy Volt, which is a compromised car between the limited range of an electric vehicle and the continuous need for fuel of a hybrid vehicle. The Chevy Volt would run exclusively on battery power for the first 40 miles. And the average driver only gets in about 33 miles per day, so that should be fun. But after that first 40 miles, there's a small engine in the car that recharges the battery and keeps you driving longer. Another company, Tesla Motors, is currently producing um, a fully electric, high-performance sports car. It comes to a full charge in just 3.5 hours, and that charge lasts for 220 miles. It comes at a high price, though, about $109,000. <laughs> But actually, that's kind of comparable to other sports cars of its caliber. Um, the Tesla company is also working on building other models, such as a family sedan. So I think there's some hope for that future. In the short term, the hybrid technology seems to be the most advanced and the most feasible for the consumer. But it's not the answer to ending our dependence on oil in the long term. I hope it can provide us with a buffer as we work towards finding more efficient ways to power of him for speed. <laughs> 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 <laughs>